In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called sliding window median. So median is basically the middle value in an order integer list. So the size of the list is even, then there's no uh, middle value. So we got to have to find the average of the two middle value. So here you can see we have an example of two, three, four, right? So if we have two, three, four, the median is going to be three because the middle value is three because the list is odd, right? So the size of the list is odd. It's an odd number. And if we have a size of the list is even number like this two, three, then the median is going to be two plus three divided by two. Okay. So in this case, we have 2.5. So given an array of nums, there is a sliding window of size K, which is moving from left to, to left of the array to the right. So uh, you can only see the K numbers in the window. So each time the sliding window uh, moves right by one position your job is to output the medium of the window current the current window right or i say each window in the original array so for example if we have an array like this and k is three so in this case you can see the the window are sliding now the median is one right because the middle value is one and in this case there could also be a situation where the median is negative one right in this case the median is negative one and the median here is going to, or I should say the middle value is going to be three, right? And so on. we basically just store those median values into an a array. And then we are, we're returning this array at the end. So something that we have to watch out for is that we want to make sure K is always valid. So K is sm always smaller than the input array size. And the answer is within this number. So of the actual value will be accepted as correct. So let's say we have an example of one, three, negative one, and uh, negative three, five, three, six, seven. So negative three, five, three, and six, seven, right? So in this case, let's say k is equal to four. Then the median in this case is going to be uh, the average of the two middle values. So the two middle values is going to be negative one and one. So the average between those two is going to be zero, right? And uh, if we were to slide our window from here to here, right? So one to the right, then we have a middle value. So two middle values are negative one and three, right? Uh, in this case, the average between them, uh, in this case, is going to be two divided by two is one. Then we slide our window again, right? So then we slide our window and now it's here, right? Including this three. So the median is going to be negative one plus three, which is in this case, it's going to be uh, two and two divided by two is zero, right? So our medium or our uh, medium value is going to be zero. Uh, if we slide our window again, negative three plus five plus three plus six. So this one right here, this window, then we're going to have a medium, which is going to be negative. Uh, hold on. Yeah, it's going to be three plus five, right? Because those are the two middle values. So in this case, we're getting eight divided by two, which is four. So you get an idea, right? So if it's even, if our window is, has a size of even number, then we're just going to take the two in the middle value and then take the average of those two. So in this case, what we can do is we can use the two heap technique, right? That we just uh, talked about on how we solve the, find the median of the data stream problem, which is very similar. Basically the idea is, is this, we're going to have a heap, right? We're going to have our max heap. And we're also going to have our min heap. The idea is that we're going to use our min heap and the max heap to keep track of the middle, the two middle values or the middle value of our current window. So usually what we're going to do is we're going to have our input data, right? So we're going to have a max heap basically to keep track of the first half of our data and the maximum value will be at the top, right? And uh, we're also going to have min heap basically keep track of the second half of our data uh, or our window and the middle value at the middle, right? Where I should say the, the smallest element will be at the top of our min heap. So the middle value is going to be those two, the, the top element for, for our min and max heap. So we can use those two elements to get our average value. And, uh, or if we have a situation where one heap has a size that's bigger than the other one, then we're just going to return the, the top uh, element of that heap. And then that will be our median for our window, right? Uh, if our current size of our window is odd number. 
So basically the idea is this, we're gonna add those elements that we have within our window onto our heaps, right? So we have a min and max heap. So in this case, initially we have one. So in this case, the rule for min and max heap is that we wanna make sure that every time when we add an element, we wanna make sure we balance the heaps. So the rule is this, we wanna make sure the max heap dot size is if it uh, is actually equal to min heap. So min heap dot size. Or if we have a situation where the min heap dot size, or sorry, the max heap dot size is actually equal to min heap dot size plus one. So we're allowed to have the max heap dot size to be bigger than min heap dot size by one. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first adding the first element onto our max heap. So in this case, because our max heap is empty, so we have one here. And then in this case, we have a window size, which is equal to K, K is equal to four. So in this case, we're just gonna keep adding those elements up to K when the size of our window is equal to reach the K, right? So in this case, our max is one and our currently our heaps are balanced. So we're just gonna to continue to add those elements. So in this case, one, three is bigger than one. So we're gonna, added onto our min heap, so we have three here. And negative one, in this case, less than one, so we're just gonna add it onto our min heap, uh, max heap. So far, we have our heaps are balanced, so now we have negative three. Negative three, in this case, is gonna be less than one, so we add it onto our max heap. And in this case, we have our heaps are unbalanced, so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the top element from our max heap and add it onto our min heap. So in this case, we're gonna have negative one added on to our min heap, uh, max heap. Um, and uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have one here and three at the bottom, right? Because we have a min heap. So in this case, three at the bottom and large element at the top. So then we once we reach the window size, which is equal to K, then we're gonna get the median. So the median is basically a top elements average. So negative one plus one, in this case is uh, zero, divided by two is zero. So once we um, done getting the median, we're gonna get our left pointer points one to the right. So now we have three, right? So in this case to shift our left pointer or, the, or shrink our window, in this case, what we need to do is we need to take the, the, the top element in this case, is negative one, we see if the, the element that we want to remove, which is in this case is one, is actually inside this heap. And to do that, we check to see if one, uh, negative one, is actually bigger than or equal to one. In this case, negative one is not bigger than or equal to one. So therefore, the, the element that we want to remove, which is one in this case, is not inside the max heap. So we're just going to remove it from the min heap. So we know that min heap, we have one here, so we're just gonna remove that, right? So now we have three at the top here. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically shift our window one to the right, and uh, now we're gonna expand our window, now we add five. So five in this case is actually bigger than negative one. So in this case, we're just gonna add it onto our min heap. So in this case, we have three at the bottom and five at the top, or I should say, sorry, three at the top, and five at the bottom because we have a min heap. So the median is gonna be negative one plus three, uh, which is gonna be two, and two divided by two in this case is gonna be zero, uh, one, sorry. So the median is gonna be one. And then we're gonna slide our window again, so we remove the top, uh, the left element. In this case, the left element is three. So we know that three is actually bigger than the top element for our max heap, so we're gonna delete it from our min heap. So our min heap has a three, so we're gonna delete it here. So you can see we have our five, right? So five at the top. And once we delete it, we still know that this current heaps are balanced. So we're gonna expand our window again. Now we have um, add three, right? This three right here onto our heaps because this three right here is actually bigger than uh, negative one. So we're gonna add it onto our min heap. So we're gonna have five at the bottom and three at the top. And we know the medium, in this case, the median is going to be, um, yeah, is, is basically going to be the top element from both heap 
um, the average of those two elements, right? So in this case, we have two divided by two, which is one. So you get an idea. Basically, we're just going to slide our windows, get our uh, inserting elements, get our median, deleting the element, the, the left element, and then shifting the window one to the right. So to do this in code, basically what we're going to do is we're going to have our constructor that defines our min and the max heap. And the reason why we use a collection that reverse order here is because there could be a situation where, in, where we're adding a element that is equal to integer.max. So if that's the case, then we want to make sure we can just use collection that reverse order. So we can't really use uh, a, b, right? So b minus a to get a descending order like that because we ha can have a situation where integer is equal, where the element that we're adding is integer.max. So that won't work. So we need to use collection that reverse order. And then we're going to have a method called add, which basically adds the element, right? It takes the element, we check to see if the max heap is not empty. Uh, sorry, if the max heap is empty, we're just going to add it onto our max heap. Or if the max heap top element for our max heap is actually bigger than none, then we also can be able to add it onto our max heap. Otherwise, if we have a situation where the max heap, uh, uh, the top element for our max heap is actually uh, less than or equal to, or sorry, yeah, less than or equal to the number that we're adding, then we're just going to add it onto our min heap. And at the end, we're going to balance our heap. Um, and then here you can see we have the removal method, right? right? Basically, we take the element and check to see if it's actually within our max heap. If it is, then we're just going to delete it in our max heap. Otherwise, we're going to, you know, delete it in our min heap, and then we're going to balance it. And inside this balance method, you can see we first check to see if the max heap dot size is actually bigger than min heap dot size plus one. If it is, then we're just going to, uh, we know that we're going to take the top element from our max heap and add it onto our min heap. And if we have a situation where the min heap dot size is actually bigger than the max heap dot size, then we're going to take the element from the min heap and add it onto our max heap. Um, in this case, that's how we balance all our heaps. So to find median, in this case, it's the same thing. Uh, we're just going to see if we have uh, whoever has a heap that is larger in size, we're just going to return that top element. And you notice that here we are basically dividing the top element for uh, each heap's top element by 2.0. Uh, the reason why is because there could be a situation where the element that we're adding is actually equal to integer.max. So in this case, we're dividing that by itself and adding them. Uh, once we get the, the the element, right? In this case, we want to make sure we're returning a double. And that's why we have 2.0. Um, and then in this case, we have a function called median, uh, median sliding window, which takes the array and the K. And uh, basically, we're, we're going to have a double array, which is called result. Basically, this is going to be the size or number of times that we're going to slide our window. It's going to be N minus K plus 1 right? Uh, or number of elements that we have minus k plus one, which is basically how many times we had to slide our window. Each time we slide our window, we expand, uh, we basically record or add the median number onto the array. And then we're just going to um, continue to do that, right? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to start from zero, right? We have our st start which is kind of like our left pointer, and our end is going to be our right pointer. We're going to slide our window until we get to a point where the size, current size of our window is actually equal to k. Then we're going to record our median, add it onto our result array, and then remove the left element. And then we move the left pointer one to the right. So then we're just going to continue to repeat the process until we get the end is actually uh, uh, bigger than or equal to numpda length. So in this in this case, at the end, we're just returning the result array. So in this case, let's try to run our code. And let's try to submit. And here you can see we have our success. So the time complexity in this case for this algorithm, right, is going to be big O of n log k. And the reason why we have n log k here is because log k for removing and deleting, uh, removing or adding element, right? Removing and adding elements will be log k for time complexity. And uh, for each iteration, 
in, or for each element in the array, we have to make sure we do the same process. So in this case, we have n log k for time complexity. And the space complexity in this case is going to be uh, big O of um, n. And the reason why is big O of n, not big O of k, is because we have um, this right here, right? We're basically adding pretty much the elements that we have in all the elements that we have in our window, right? Or each time we slide our window, we're basically adding the median number onto the result. And if we have a situation where k is equal to one, right? Then we want to make sure we're basically adding, let's say, n minus k plus one, which is basically n elements onto the, the result. So in this case, we're getting um, we're getting n, right? So the space complexity is going to be big of n. 